Hey there everybody, Ultramag64 here. And if you didn't know or haven't been keeping up with the recent events of Season 4, uh, the new synopsis for the first two-parter has just been released. Now, before I start this video off, I just want to say that this will be in heavy spoiler territory, so if you don't want to be spoiled to your heart's content, please do not watch this video. And also, this is just going to be unscripted, totally just off the record, off the books. Uh, no script has been made, nothing, it's just my knee-jerk reactions and thoughts on the whole thing. So, let's go ahead and jump right in. So before we get off on this whole spoilerific thing, let's go ahead and just read the synopsis itself. The fourth season begins with a revealing two-part premiere, in which the newly crowned Princess Twilight must balance their new royal duties and her friendship with her other ponies. Amid preparations for the Summer Sun celebration in Canterlot, Princess Cadence, or Celestia and Luna go missing, and a few forces taking over Equestria. These unexpected turn of events sends Princess Twilight and her pony friends on a quest to discover the mysterious foe who threatens to destroy everything. Literally everything. Is it all up to Princess? It is all up to Princess Twilight and her friends to help save Equestria from being destroyed. As part of the journey, Princess Twilight is given the chance to discover a secret behind the elements of harmony. My Little Pony Friendship Magic follows the magical Princess Twilight Sparkle and her trusted assistant Spike, who lives in Ponyville, with the enchanted land of Equestria. Equestria is spelt wrong in this post. Along with her colorful pony friends, Honest Applejack, Generous Rarity, and Kind Fluttershy, Loyal Rainbow Dash, and Fun-Loving Pinkie Pie. Together, they teach one another valuable lessons about the most powerful magical fall friendship uh yeah that's about it um so knee-jerk reactions to this they stole my season two of feed the bronies didn't they no in all seriousness um i honestly like the idea of celesti and luna kind of oh they've taken a back seat in basically every season it's never been about them but for once it is, and uh, I kind of like that because it reminds me of season one where it was all about Luna, and we didn't see Celestia at all. So hopefully we get a little bit of backstory. Ho maybe it's going to be someone different. I mean, here's the thing: we've had about three big villains, haven't we, in this whole My Little Pony thing, haven't we? Um, Chrysalis, Sombra. And Nightmare. Well, it, and Discord if you count Discord, but uh, I kind of don't count him as evil per se because he was just having fun. Anyway, so I'm thinking this is coming from the Everfree Forest, obviously, since the Everfree Forest is kind of taking over with Celestia and Luna gone, which um, is odd because we never really heard that they kind of control, they kind of kept. Equestria safe from the Everfree Forest because, I mean, if you haven't been keeping up with the fandom or didn't watch season one, then you'll know Everfree Forest is kind of this its own thing. It works on its own terms. It's it's natural. It's not like, you know, Pegasi don't have to do the weather. Uh, I'm not even sure if the day and night cycle even works the same way. We don't, there's so much we don't know about the Everfree Forest. We don't, heck, we don't even know all the creatures in the Everfree Forest. Let alone we know that Pinkie Pie s discovers the Mirror Pond Pool legend. How many other legends are there out there? We just don't know a lot about it. And that's what really excites me about this, is to see something new and, I don't know, creative from this. So, in the picture which you're seeing right now, is there is a picture of the main six, you know, stock vectors. Good lord, why can't we get nice vectors? But anyway, there's stock vectors, and there's this interesting, there's nothing really of interest here. Except for the fact that there is a tree. A tree here. Now this tree kind of looks like it's holding the elements of harmony. Unfortunately, the image is really small, and I've had to blow it up a little bit. So it might be a little hard to make out, but it appears that there is... They look like the elements of harmony, almost. In their rawest form. Like, they don't look like the necklaces that have been refined and look like the cutie marks and stuff like that. They look like, almost like they did in Season 1 with, I'll put a picture up here of a screenshot of what, it lo what they look like. But they kind of look un 
unreformed, almost like that tree might be the origin of the elements of harmony, and that might be what we're looking at here. Um, that's just a shot in the dark, but I don't know. I mean, considering the landscape that they're in here, it looks like they're in maybe what's the heart of the Everfree Forest. Maybe, just maybe, the elements of harmony were created by the Everfree Forest, or in the Everfree Forest, maybe. Maybe that's their origin. Maybe we don't know. You know, maybe this has something to do with Luna and Celestia's parents. We just don't know at this point, and honestly, there's not much to go on with the synopsis. Um, another thing I find interesting is that Twilight is going to be kind of shouldering her princessness with being friends with all her friends and stuff. That, to me, is interesting because that, that was tackled in the Equestria Girls movie. However, we might get a little bit more depth with this. Now, as where she rules, that's another story, because, honestly, I don't know where she could rule where her friends would be able to follow her, because they, you can't just, like, okay, for instance, if she were to, say, move to uh, Canterlot, if she uh, ruled over Canterlot, which, that's not gonna happen right now, obviously, but if she did rule over Canterlot, where would her friends go? I mean, Rarity, sure, she could probably pick up shop and move to Canterlot. Um, but, I mean, look at Applejack. Applejack's family lives there. She has, you know, she works with her family. And to ask her to pick up and move, that's just not plausible to me. Now, as for Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy, Rainbow Dash can, Rainbow Dash's house is a cloud. I'm sure it can move. And, uh, Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy, I mean, well, Pinkie Pie, I guess, can throw a party anywhere, but we've also noticed that Pinkie Pie's parties really aren't well received in Canterlot from, you know, the best night ever. And Fluttershy, again, we also saw that Fluttershy is not the best at talking at the animals in Canterlot. So, I mean, I don't know. It could work. I mean, if they gave her just dumb, if they let her just be ruler of Ponyville, that'd be a little weird because Ponyville's not its own... I mean, well... The thing is, Crystal Empire has its own thing, and Canterlot has its, so... I guess it's possible, but... I mean, where would Mayor Mare go in that? I mean... She'd be like, yeah, uh, Mayor Mare, we're gonna have to ask you to, you know, uh, vacate the premises here, because, uh, we just got ourselves a new princess, and we're just gonna, you know, let her take all care of this stuff. So yeah, just, just, just go back to pushing papers. Uh, I, I just don't see that happening, and I don't know. I don't know what kind of princessal royal duties she'll have, but I mean, without a place to rule over, I don't know. It, it seems rather odd. Um, she may be ruling over the Everfree Forest, that would be interesting. Um, I'm not sure how that would work, because the Everfree Force is kind of its own thing. They could tame it, but then they wouldn't have any conflict, now would they? Because basically most of their conflict comes from the Everfree Forest, at least in the main, you know, series, if we're not counting two-parters here, where, you know, the Changelings have their own area, so maybe, maybe, maybe they're gonna go and conquer the Changelings and dethrone Chrysalis, I don't know. Um, but it's, it's just interesting. Um, Another thing I seem to notice is that, I mean, I'm trying to word this correctly. Uh, I think that what we're going to see in this next thing, and I'm going to bring up the animatics right now, um, the whole episode with Twilight watching things from Celestia's point of view, I think that might be in this episode, in these two part episode thing. Maybe. Maybe. I'm not sure. I kind of... Part of me thinks that's going to be it because it's logical. And then the other part of me says, I really wish they don't do that. Because I want that to be its own episode. I want to know more. And I feel like if they kind of just scrunched that in there, there may be some more gray area that we won't get if it was its own episode. But, I mean... I don't know. I don't know. That's... And again, and the other thing is, unless it had something to do with, you know, Luna 
turning into Nightmare Moon, I don't see it, you know, necessarily needing to be there. So I'm probably gonna think I'm I'm gonna say that that's its own episode and it's not gonna have anything to do with this season two part. Um, but we might get another one because uh, Megan McCarthy has said that technically there is a um, three or four part. Um, I don't remember. There's a tweet. I'll put it up here. But uh, I can't remember off the top of my head if it's four or three. But we just haven't seen them all, and they may not necessarily be in order. Now, whether that means it, whether that was, if I remember correctly, that was. Sorry about that. My recording had stopped. As I was saying, though, I'm not sure if that was referring to Games Ponies Play, where it was technically a two-parter episode, but it was kind of. It was different enough not to be at the same time, so that could have been it. Um, I'm honestly not sure. Uh, it would depend on when that tweet was made. I'll have to go look it up later. But it's just rather interesting that we're going to get a, another two-parter. Um, especially after season one, or not season one, season three had its one-part finale, uh, which... I totally am okay with I'm okay with more two-parters because I really think that the story writers here are just so wonderful. I honestly wish that they had more time with, say, Canterlot Wedding because I feel like that would have been really well done because they just ha they just didn't have enough time uh, to make to craft this really good story. And so hopefully they have enough time in this one to do what they want to do and, you know, put all the things in the right way that they want, basically. The only hindrance I have is, where is Cadence in all this? I mean, Cadence has the Crystal Empire, and I'm pretty sure that unless she's gonna be fending off the ever-free forest, which... Well, let's take, a, let's take a minute to think about this. Cadence's Crystal Empire is up north. Let's, let's put a map up of Equestria. Here's where I think it is. I think it's in the Arctic North areas. So... She's about as far away from the Everfree Forest as you can pretty much get. So, to me, it's like, okay, Cadence, you're kind of pulling a Luna here. And if you know, if you watch the, the uh, Royal Cantalot Wedding, you'll know what I'm talking about. We didn't see Luna at all. So, I, I mean, where is she? Uh, I really don't think she would need, to, I, I mean, unless the Crystal Ponies just are like, you know, we will get depressed if you leave us. Do not leave us ever, Cadence. I mean, that's that's the thing. Is we I, there's so much, so much stuff we don't know about the Crystal Empire still, and it's there's just so much stuff I hope gets you know better explained in season four, because I mean, it's there's there's so many questions and so much speculation we can make from this. I could go on and on and on forever about this, but I I really I just. There's so many things we don't know. Uh, another thing I'm wondering is, I mean, what kind of villain are we going to look at here? Is it going to be, you know, as I've thought of in the past, is it going to be Star Swirl the Bearded? Um, honestly, I'm not sure. I would think Star Swirl would be more of a villain in the past. So, say, you know, around the time Luna turns into Nightmare Moon, maybe Star Swirl has something to do with that. Maybe Star Swirl is a totally good guy. I hope he's not, because I think he'd have a really interesting story if he was, you know, an evil guy. Um, but, you know, we don't know anything about that. And honestly, I don't think... Unless Star Swirl has found a way to be immortal, which... I mean, granted, he's the guy who came up with a time spell. I'm pretty sure he could figure out something to make him immortal. I don't know. Um, maybe he travels into the future and wrecks some stuff. I don't know. There's so much we don't know about this, and it's very interesting. Um, we may get, like, the king of, or queen, of the Everfree Forest. We don't know. There's just so much we don't know, and the writers can use that to their advantage. And I just can't wait to see what we get. Also, the tree itself looks almost like a crystal kind of crystallized almost like the similar to the way the crystal ponies are designed where it's kind of translucent now granted this image is very small I can't see it all the way but from where I am seeing it it looks kind of crystallized also if you'll notice 
in the center, it appears like Twilight's cutie mark is exactly, you know, it's the same shape, which is interesting. Um, that would mean Twilight's in the center of all this. So, does she have something to do with this tree? Is it something her... I mean, we don't even know what her parents do. Her parents, as far as we know, are normal Colts and Mayor. So, we don't really know what's what's gonna happen here. And it's just, it's interesting. I'm excited. I am super pumped for Season 4. I just can't wait for November to come already and give me my Season 4 ponies. But anyway, guys, that's gonna about wrap it up for this, uh synopsis thoughts impressions thing i hope you guys enjoyed i hope you have a fantastic day if you haven't checked them out yet i will put a link where the article is so you guys can read it for yourself and speculate give me some speculation in the comments down below tell me what you guys think about this whole season four and what this tree is i'm gonna call it the tree of harmony for right now until we get an official thing named and name it but anyway guys, I'm Ultramag64, as always, happy speculation!